Welcome to the Grief Relief Show with mother-daughter team doctors Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. Today we'll be talking about losing a sibling. Your brothers and sisters can be your best friends. They're the only people who know who you truly are from the day you're born. There's no bond greater than that of brothers and sisters. There's nobody you can fight with so fiercely one minute and then defend just as fiercely the next. The love between siblings is like no other. And the loss of a sibling can be so devastating that you may feel like you lost a piece of yourself. It's okay if you need help as you struggle to go on living without them. Now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Well, Heidi, we've got an interesting show today, and I know that it's one that's dear to your heart. Yes, it is, and I'm so excited that we are bringing in all these people that have had a sibling die so that we can educate the world about how horrific it is to lose a sibling and what a big part of our lives are gone when our sibling is out of our lives. Absolutely, and we want to dedicate this show today to the Newtown survivors, those siblings there, because mm -hmm. we know it is quite a journey for them, and it will be. You know, one of my friends said to me, uh, they're scarred for life, uh, the, the siblings of these kids at Newtown. And, and I was wondering, what's your thought? Well, I always say, Mom, from my experience, you know, losing Scott has defined my life, but in no way has it destroyed my life. Because I feel like our brothers and sisters, they live forever in our hearts and in our memories and in our lives. And you know, there's some different aspects about sibling loss. Now my brother died a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and you know, he was in his late 70s. I didn't see him that often, and I'll miss him, and I have happy memories of him. But losing a sibling out of context is really a different kind of experience, isn't it? It is, because like I always say, you know what, our brothers and sisters, we expect them to be in our lives forever. And They're, these are some good tips you're giving us. Yeah, they're parallel travel, travelers in our lives. We, we, you know, we grow up with them, we expect for them to be at our weddings, we expect for them to be at our graduations, to have kids together, to grow old together. Most kids in the United States will spend 80 to 100% of their lifetimes with their siblings. We spend 33% of our lives with our siblings growing up, even if we don't like them. Wow. Well, we're going to have some great siblings come on the show today. Mm -hmm. Elijah Marquez, whose brother was killed in a motorcycle accident, Chris is going to be on with us. And uh, Jason Stout is going to come on, mm -hmm. and he's got a program that is amazing, Outward Bound. He's a brief sibling, so we'll be talking to him today. It's going to be a yes. great show on sibling loss. I am excited, and I'm particularly excited to talk about Outward Bound because Outward Bound is a program that really saved my life and transformed my life after Scott died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the things about getting in group, and we're going to be mm -hmm. talking a lot about what siblings can do. Can you talk a little bit about the Compassionate Friends Sibling Program quickly? Because I know you're on their board. Sure. Okay. Um, Compassionate Friends is the largest peer support organization in the world. And they have 660 chapters. And we have an amazing sibling program. And we get all these siblings together. And, you know, it's so powerful to be in a room with other people that have had a brother or sister die because they really get it. And you don't really have to say a lot. You're just there with them and it really normalizes your experience. Yeah. And we've got a great studio audience today, and I know some of them have lost siblings, so it's gonna be a great show, and we wanna introduce Elijah Marquez now okay. to our show. Okay, great. Hi, Elijah. Hello. Hi, Elijah. Hi. <laughs> so great to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you so much. We Thanks for coming you. on I'm today. I'm excited. Okay. Have a seat. Well, I met your mom at the Compassionate Friends about three years ago, right mm -hmm. after your brother Chris had been killed um, in an accident shortly after, and got to know her, and what a great family you've got, and meeting yeah. you, and <laughs> having you come to Compassionate Friends last year. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about Chris? My brother died when he was 24, mm -hmm. so it was about three years ago, I think in August. Mm -hmm. And how old were you? Mm -hmm. I was 19 or 18. I was 18, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. Were you still in high yes. school? It was my third day of my senior year. So oh, my wow. gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How, uh, how in yeah. incredible. Well, we're so sorry about that. You know, it's been a, a long time for mm -hmm. Heidi, what, almost mm -hmm. 25 years, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, but, you know, it was interesting because I'm, I'm just wondering with your experience. I mean, here you are, a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. You think Chris is going to be in your life forever. He's your big brother. I mean, and to have him suddenly gone. I'm just wondering what that's like going back into high school. Had you, were there other kids that had had brothers or sisters die? Were you, did your friends relate to you? 
Well, it was a very bizarre experience. I know I mm -hmm. went to school the next morning wow. because it hadn't really like mm -hmm. settled in yet. Right. And I know I told, I texted a few of my friends about it the like, previous day. And they were actually very supportive. They didn't really need to say anything. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. just kind of there for me. So, mm -hmm. I mean, did, did you find that? Uh, I know Heidi mm -hmm. um, said, "Don't talk about the cards you got and, and how people responded." Well, it's interesting because you know there is a there is a kind of a hierarchy in the world where, you know, the death of a child trumps everything else. And so, as a sibling, you feel like you're so worried about your parents that you feel like, well, maybe I don't really have the right to totally grieve because my parents are going through so much. Um, which is one of the reasons we grieve alone, I think, a lot of times. But, you know, I noticed that the society tend to minimize my loss. When I said I had a brother that died, they'd say, wow, that must have been really hard on your parents. And my parents got a lot of sympathy cards and a lot of support, and I didn't feel like I did. So I didn't know if that was your experience or it sounds like yeah. some of your friends were there my for you. My experience was actually kind of the opposite. Oh, that's great. Because I know at I my brother's this. funeral, all my teachers were there, even people mm -hmm. that I'd never had as my teacher. Mm -hmm. And I, they actually gave me a card and with a gift card inside, mm -hmm. and they all signed it with really nice things. So You know, I love that because yeah. I'm thinking maybe the times are changing a mm -hmm. little bit. Well, and I'm wondering with texting mm -hmm. and the Internet, I know with Facebook it's really changed the way people yeah. are grieving. I mean, mm -hmm. you can kind of say things to people through text that you mm -hmm. might not be able to say through in person. In person. Yeah. So it sounds like you got a lot of support that way. Mm -hmm. I did get a lot of support through Facebook because people would go on to my Facebook and send me, say, like a paragraph or even a sentence, and they wouldn't usually feel comfortable coming up to me and saying it to my face right. because you don't really know how someone will respond to you. I love that. If they've lost someone, you don't well, really want to go up to them right after because you don't know how they'll respond and, and to And that's, that. that's what people are always saying. Heidi, mm -hmm. we don't know what to say, so we don't, know, we don't say anything. And I say the best thing you can say is, hi, we heard that your brother died or your sister. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to say. It's like, wow, thank you for even acknowledging it. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So are there things that helped that people did that helped you? I would just say the support structure mm -hmm. because every single one of my teachers helped me through it. And it was the beginning of the year, so that's when all the projects were starting. And, and then I had my main group of friends, which really helped me through it. So. Mm -hmm. And of course, my family. Did you find uh, that any friends kind of deserted mm -hmm. you? I actually seemed to gain friends because the class that I was in, we were in a lot of similar classes together, and people that I hadn't really talked through mm -hmm. the whole year would come up to me and just like give me a hug. Yeah, I love so, that. Mm -hmm. You do you have some new friends come into mm -hmm. your life as a result. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of amazing, and it kind mm -hmm. of cuts through all the crap in a way. But yeah. did you find that sometimes people didn't want to invite you to parties, or you were supposed to be more fun? I actually didn't experience that, and I know the experiences I went through are, are mm -hmm. not similar to what you were speaking about where people do desert you. Mm -hmm. It seemed like in my case people became closer to me and they wanted to spend more time with but me. But I'm wondering if it's something so. you did. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like we really need to teach people to be good grief support mm -hmm. and sometimes we feel like they should be psychic and they don't know what we need. Mm -hmm. So maybe there was something that you put out there that it was okay to talk about your brother and that they mm -hmm. could come to you. I think, I'm guessing that that's what was going on. Heidi, yeah. let's take one question from the audience. Your, and your name? Yeah, Charlie Eady. Charlie. Yeah, so um, the, uh, the question I have has to do with just the teen parent relationship after mm -hmm. loss. And um, our son died when he was 16, and now his sister is 16. And mm -hmm. teens naturally are risk takers, and they like to do things, you know, sort of that their parents don't know about or they don't think they know about. And so I'm just wondering, you know, with that typical teen context and then you overlay the grief mm -hmm. and the loss on top of that, if you could just comment about navigating those treacherous waters. From a parent perspective, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay, do you, Elijah, do you have any comments or? No, I have a little comment I can throw in. I would say that if you just support your child when they want to take a risk, because I know when my brother passed away in a motorcycle accident, I went and got my motorcycle license. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like a month later, it was just, because you want to take a risk, but you almost want to do it for them. Mm -hmm. So if you guys just get involved in the process of them taking this risk, then you're all taking a risk together as a family for your child that you lost. So. I love that, that's so interesting, Heidi, because I'm thinking of you uh, going on Outward Bound. And, and that was kind of, you know, three months later, you got your motorcycle and you went <laughs> on a program that Scott went on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and so. I think it's important for parents, I understand the parent concern, but I think it's also for parent, important for parents to realize that we need to be normal teens and normal kids, and mm -hmm. we need to have experiences, and that 
we prob no, probably nothing is going to happen to us, even though I know as a parent you still are concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking, uh, Heidi and I were talking earlier, Heidi has worked a lot with 9-11 siblings, mm -hmm. and uh, we were talking about like the, the Newtown disaster, about uh, if it makes a difference how people have died, a motorcycle accident mm -hmm. with Chris, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I did. I worked with 9-11 siblings for 10 years that lost firefighters in the Trade Center, and one of the things I was struck by was our experiences as brief siblings are more similar than different. I thought because this was such a national tragedy there'd be differences, but it was very similar. They were worried about their parents, and they often felt that their grief was unacknowledged and minimized. Mm -hmm. because people didn't really understand how significant a sibling is in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you feeling any of that? It sounds like you're feeling pretty <laughs> comfortable with the whole... Do you I have love any? it. I love this other yeah. side that I'm seeing. I know. Well, I'm kind of thinking with Facebook and the new yeah. thing, things are, uh, things are changing. It's definitely a new experience because people are more willing to grieve with you mm -hmm. through technology because I think it does make them more comfortable and keeps them in their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to reach out to you. Maybe not in person, but that's okay, because yeah. you're still getting that support. Right. So, well, we're going to close the sh you mm -hmm. know this part of the show today. But I want to ask you: Are you still riding? And are your parents <laughs> riding? And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're still riding your motorcycle. And do you? Get oh to no, no, I have my license, but I don't have a motorcycle. So oh, okay. I've only ridden a few times, but right. that's my next. Maybe. Well, I think, <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting yeah. because that says to the parents, you were saying, uh, what do you mm -hmm. do when the kids want to take risks? You wanted to get the license, but you really then didn't really yeah. do that much with it or, you know, run around. It was one of those risks that you take for them. Yeah. So even though I have it now and I don't use it, at the time I feel like I needed to take that risk for right. him. Well, listen, so. thank you so much for being on the show thank today. Thank you so much. I loved it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Heidi, now we're going to um, see an Outward Bound rollout. And uh, you went on Outward Bound three months after Scott died. I in did. Colorado, hiking in the Colorado Rockies. And it was uh, quite an experience for you, wasn't it? It was unbelievable, yes. And very life-transforming. Yeah, and Jason Stout's going to come on and uh, after we see the roll-in and uh, talk to us about Outward Bound. And thank you again so much Elijah, for being on the show. Thank you so much. Had a great time. I don't think there is an ideal thing that a student learns because every course is different, every student is different. I think the most valuable thing that people learn when they come to Outward Bound is that they're capable of doing more than they thought. A greater sense of self-confidence. Confidence. Confidence that I can really do anything that I want to. The goal is that every student leaves course as a better person. Compassion is a theme that goes throughout each section of the course every day, every moment. gives people that kind of passion for life and that curiosity to go and seek more adventures. An expedition is about traveling with other people and making sure that everybody gets there and everybody's safe and everybody's taking care of each other. Probably become a better person because I have learned a lot about myself. And we're stripped away of all our civilized world. Yeah, and I hope they just have fun. I hope they find a new way to have fun. I just want to change the world. <laughs> it gets to the heart of it. I think they'd walk away with finding out something that they uh, didn't know was in them. Wow, Mom, that really reminded me of my Outward Bound program. Wow, I remember you going on that. What You weighed 95 pounds and carried a, what was your pack? We got letters from you. It was a heavy pack, but I've got to say to everybody out there, you do not need to be athletic to go on this program. Trust me, I wasn't. And I got so much out of it. And you went three months after Scott died and really got yourself I had was some at, experiences. I was at the lowest point in my life 
when I went. I honestly, the pain was so great, I didn't know how I was gonna survive or if I wanted to. And after I came back, I knew that anything was possible and I had hope again. That's how powerful that experience was. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're gonna have Jason Stout yes. come on because he is our Outward Bound man and I he's got it. a new journey for us to talk I'm excited. about. excited. Hey, Jason. Hi, hey. Jason. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. Welcome to the show. Wow, wow. Jason. <laughs> I love it. Everything you need in your life is right here in this pack, people. I Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason. Are you going to help him get his pack off? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's see. I, I think he can Ugh. handle it, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the light one here, so I, so I would look good. All right, Jason. Well, Jason, tell us a little bit about your sister and about your childhood. I know you had a lot of losses in your childhood. and have enjoyed, you know, Outward Bound hiking and those kinds of things and set up a whole program. So, but start right. out by telling us how you got there. Yeah, well, when I was, when I was four years old, my sister Maria, she died. Uh, she was five years old. She was, Maria was born with hydrocephalus. So, you know, hydrocephalus being a brain disorder and uh, excess fluids in her head. Um, so she died and uh, that was really challenging for me. I, I just remember how scared I was mm -hmm. that I felt like I felt afraid for Maria mm -hmm. I felt like where I, I wanted to know where she was and you were a little guy and I was a little guy but I still remember being so worried about her and you yeah. know when is she coming home and yeah. and my mom the other day um, she gave me this journal and she had written that I was always asking why is there dirt on Maria mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So all those young young things. Right. So then from that, you kind of carried the experience. And you were telling me recently that up until a few years ago, you thought that you'd been involved in her death, right? Right, right. Yeah, for many years, I, I carried that story with. Because she had uh, fallen or something? Yeah, I was holding her on a couch like this one day, and I was loving Maria. And uh, I dropped her, and it was only you know, maybe six, eight inches. And uh, she was crying. And I was crying, and uh, that was my last memory of Maria. Wow. So now you've started this program called Heroic Journey. Right. Right, for Outward Bound. You worked with Outward Bound. And tell us about that. Right. So uh, Heroic Journey, wh what that is, is it is Outward Bound. We're using all the same uh, things that we do on Outward Bound, like mm -hmm. rock climbing, uh, hiking up a 14,000-foot peak. But what we're doing is we're making it more relevant for teenagers that are grieving. Mm -hmm. We've added some yeah. activities that give the, the kids that space where they can move into their grief, hold onto it, and let it go. Mm -hmm. And they're fun activities. Mm -hmm. And so it's still, it's 90% outward bound, so they're having fun and they're, they're finding out what they're capable of. But then we have space set aside where we can talk about what happened and connect with each other. Yeah. Well, let's take a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, oh, we're gonna do that at the end, aren't we? Okay, we're going over to look at your equipment in a minute. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look over at your equipment and then we'll take some questions. Sounds great. Want to remind Heidi of some of your equipment. I know, this is exciting. This is a time travel for me, Jason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. here we are over looking at this. Right. Okay. So what do we got here? So, so um, right here. Well, we had the backpack over there, but here we have a climbing rope. Wow. And I think the climbing rope really represents Outward Bound because Sorry. Outward Bound is about using challenge, adventure-based challenge, yep. to bring out the best in people. And Heidi, you remember climbing, right? Well, the thing about it was I, everybody has a strength on Outward Bound, and you don't know where your strengths lie until you get there. And I had never climbed in my life. I mean, I had, you know, my idea of roughing it is, a hotel without room service. So, you know, when I went there, I got this, they, they said, Heidi, you can do it. And I said, I don't know if I can, but my brother had just died and I had gone, I had, was surviving that. So I thought I'm gonna push myself. And I, it was amazing. Right. This was my strength was climbing, rock climbing and propelling. I never thought I would be good at it. I right. want you to tell Jason the story of what happened to you hiking up the mountain. Okay. And our audience. <laughs> okay, mom, you want me to do that now? Yep. Um, on my brother's 18th birthday, he had only been dead three, year, three months. I was in the exact same mountain region, the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, as he had been three months ago. And we had just gotten up a, an extremely intense hike. And we were, it was all these false summits. And we honestly did not think we could go on. And my group said, we can't go on. We're not going to go on. And we weren't with our leader. We were meeting them. 
And I seriously prayed to my brother and I said, Scott, if I've ever needed you, it's now. I need you. You need to just somehow help us. And something, some energy force came in and just propelled us up that mountain. And wow. I know he was with us that day. And it was his birthday. Wow. So it was a beautiful thing. So I felt very connected to him. And I know you talk about looking behind you and thinking somebody had been I pushing did. you up. I, I, felt, I felt hands on my shoulders pushing me up the mountain. But there was no one behind me. That's a beautiful so, story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that really, uh, for the kids that have been doing Outward Bound and this uh -huh. special program for grieving teens on Outward Bound, we hear a lot of stories. Yeah. For going out into the wilderness and getting away from everything, I think that we, we connect mm -hmm. with that person. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you have some little rituals where you write things. Right. Write yeah. their names on the equipment. Yeah. Well, we have well, one of the things we do and on every course, and you did this, right? You mm -hmm. climb to the top of a mountain, you do a peak yeah. ascent. But what we do is we hand out athletic tape, and the participants can write the name of their loved one who died, and then also someone alive that they care about, and then they climb that mountain. Yeah. And it's a 14,000 foot That's peak. Amazing. And it's so hard. And every step that they take, they're yeah. connecting with that person until wow. they get to the top. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about this stove. I mean, mm -hmm. Heidi complained and complained and complained about taking the stove. Well, you don't, you don't want to carry any more than you have to, <laughs> trust me, because your life is on your back. <laughs> right. Well, we, we were talking, yeah, the, 1982, that's when you did 83, your... 83, yeah. 1983, I'm sorry. The stoves might have been bigger then. Yeah, so they th were. this is the Whisper Light. This is a very light stove. Uh huh. And uh, but you can cook up big pots of pasta, mm -hmm. re refried beans. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, love that. yeah. <laughs> we eat peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. I I know you guys were laughing about how good the food tastes out there. Yeah, I mean. Yep. If we were to have some of that food right now, we might not want it. But if when you're out in the wilderness and you've been hiking all day and you've been exercising then it's, it's incredible what will taste good. You know, Heidi, I really liked what you said about, um, ab about going out there three months later, because I think there's uh, people out there in the audience who are thinking, could I do that this early, you know? Well, you know, Mom, my life was hell at that point, and so I felt, you know what, it, my life can't be any worse than it is on this now, and so I might as well just go out and do something out of my comfort zone, because I was in such a bad space. Right. I think one of the highlights w of the program for me was the three-day solo. Yeah. Being alone with the journal and myself and not having to wear the mask and pretend was very freeing. And you don't have to pretend on this program. Right. You can cry, you can scream, you can yell. Nobody cares. Right. It was a beautiful thing. Well, let's take some questions. I know we might have some That's questions great. from the audience out there for you guys. Does anybody have a, a question for them? Let's see it closer. Ah, good. You want to give us your name? Uh, Jen Pacheco. Do we have any heroic journey for adults programs? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, since we started this program back in 2006, we've had about 550 participants uh, graduate from the, the seven day program. And most of those have been teenagers ages 14 to 18, but we have done a couple of patrols. That's what we call our groups of 10. And they were ages 19 to 24. And it was a wonderful program for them. And we are excited about adding some adult programs. At this point right now, we are primarily serving just 14 to 18 year olds. But I would look on the Outward Bound website and uh, just s stay in touch with us because that new adult course should come open uh, the end of 2013. Mm, fabulous. Well, th thank you. Um, so Heidi and Jason, I mm. want to know what you think if you're both bereaved siblings. I would like to know what you think that the main thing, if you could tell a sibling out there, what would it be? You first. The, the main yeah. thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, Mom. That's tough. That's a really hard question. Um, ooh, I, guess, I guess for me, you'll never forget your brother or sister ever. It doesn't matter how much time goes. They live forever in our hearts, our memories. My brother is my guiding light, and he gives me endless energy, and he's always with me. I would say that um, it's important to find a program, whether it's a heroic journey or compassionate friends, to connect with others that have experienced what you have. And uh, th there's just so many wonderful programs out there, what, 650 chapters for mm -hmm. compassionate friends. And I think nothing feels better than knowing that you're not alone in the grief journey. I agree with that. 
Well, Jason, we have something for you today. Uh, Open to Hope wants to give you a check for uh, one, a student to go on Outward Bound, a bereaved person, and we would love a bereaved sibling, and we want people to know out there, if you know somebody who's a bereaved sibling that you would like to send on the Outward Bound program, we are giving a scholarship to Jason, and it will be a full scholarship for flight and whatever to go on your program. Thank you so much. I just want to yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, Thank you. for everything you're doing. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, it is so important, the work you're doing with Outward Bound. And Heidi, you're a perfect example of... Uh, Absolutely. I will sing Outward Bound's praises because, yep. like I said, it has changed me. Absolutely. I, th I think it's uh, knowing that you are able to do something that you never thought you could. And, and th that stretch and that journey that you have people do is, is uh, going beyond your capacity. And you're always there mm -hmm. to support them. And, and you know, I, I love the fact that you're a brief sibling and, uh, you know, you know what it is for them. And you've also uh, lost a parent, too. As it, didn't you lose your parent before you were 14, too? Jesus yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Yeah, four, uh, when I was four, my sister died. And when I was seven years old, my grandmother was murdered. Mm. And then when I was 14, my dad died of a heart attack in his, in his sleep. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's, um, it's so inspirational for me to hear someone that's had all these losses before 14 and has gone on to transform their lives and help others through the journey. Yeah. You are inspiration. Well, I, and it, I just want to say that it, it, Outward Bound has been a big part of my healing journey. And I, I started with a seven-day course, and I took that a 78-day Outward Bound course. Wow. And I, that gave me the Jason, confidence gotta, to Jason, we've got to wrap it Love up it. now. Love and it. I want to thank everybody for watching the show today and blessings to all those people in Newtown and to all the brief siblings out there. You'll make it, right? Yeah. And God bless. That's great. This is for you, you love this. This has been the Grief Relief Show, hosted by mother-daughter team Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. This show has been brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. Be sure to visit opentohope.com, where you can listen to radio programs, watch Open to Hope TV, read articles, and view books. You can also join Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi on Twitter and Facebook, and put your events on their international calendar. Thanks for watching, and remember, others have been there and made it. You can too.